فإذا كنت تريد أن تكون على مذهب السلف تعلم مذهب السلف وما هم عليه على الكتاب والسنة واتباع السلف الصالح Again, this is a major, major issue in our societies. You don't find perhaps even a single family or a single extended family, except they know somebody who has been afflicted with sihab, somebody who is under the influence of it, their family members, their friends. It seems that there's always somebody in our circle who is afflicted with this type of thing. But the worst thing is, Ikhwan, is that in our society, living right here, right now in Alam Rock, Birmingham, 2017, you don't need to go far down the road to find a Sahir. You don't need to go far down the road and you don't need to uh, make many phone calls to get in touch with somebody and you can say to them, I want to cause a divorce between husband and wife and that person will say yes and he's willing to help you for a, a figure for a sum you don't need to go far to pick up the phone and go and meet somebody who is willing to uh, willing to do magic in order to separate a man from his wife or to cause destruction in a person's business to make a person lose his health to, to ruin a family this is in our our locality right here right now Ikhwan and subhanallah people think it just happens far away it's happening right here it's happening right now ikhwani how does a person become a magician this is something that i want you to see rather than i want you to hear i want you to see okay so what i have on my laptop and i'm going to turn it around and perhaps the younger brothers uh, shouldn't look what i have on my laptop are some videos Okay, these are videos, as I mentioned to you, one of the uh, shaykh who taught me with regards to this was Sheikh Adil ibn Tahir al-Muqbil and he is the president of the uh, enjoining of the good and the forbidding of the evil and they within that, uh, within that council they have a task force and their job is to catch magicians. Okay, and so he came and he gave us this material and he said go and teach the people show the people that this is what the magicians do and so when they catch the magicians they force them to show some of their tricks and how they seek the pleasure of the shayateen and remember Ikhwan what did we say we said that magic is a contract between the sahir between the magician and one or more of the devils of the shayateen where the magician does acts of worship acts of glorification acts of obedience to who to the shayateen and in return they will then help him fulfill his objectives so the first thing that you need to know is that the magician, he, his magic will not work until when he recognizes that what he is doing is disbelief. This is important. The magician's magic will not work until he recognizes and he understands what I am doing is an act of disbelief. Ikhwani, I don't have it with me now, but part of what they do and what we have is a booklet and it shows you uh, their codes okay so they have it's written in arabic and they have uh, verses or, or uh, sentences saying if you want to cause divorce between a man and his wife if you want to cause divorce between a man and his wife then what you need to do is you need to uh, read surat at uh, recite rather write surat at talaq the surah of divorce is called surat at talaq write that down on a paper okay then you have to make it najis means you have to uh, either urinate on it or you have to defecate on this piece of paper then what you need to do is you need to put that into a bottle and leave it there x y and z and then at the end it says fear allah and know that this is kufr think about this ikhwani he is teaching you how to cause divorce between a man and his wife and you are being told to disgrace a passage from the book of allah and then at the end it says fear allah and know that this is disbelief why why does it why do you need to tell me 
of course, if somebody is defecating on the book of Allah, putting it in the toilet, this is disbelief. This is clear, open disbelief. You don't need to come to that person and say, now, you know, brother, what's wrong with you? No, clear, open disbelief is disgracing the book of Allah in this way. Open disbelief. But why does it say there, fear Allah? And know that this action is disbelief because they want the person who is doing the sihr to know. He knows and he accepts what I have done is an action of disbelief. I don't care. I still want to perform magic. The angels at the time of Harut, the two angels, Harut and Marut, they said that we don't teach anybody. You need to know, don't learn this from us. This is disbelief. This is an action of disbelief. They didn't teach anybody until they said, indeed, we are a trial. So don't disbelieve by learning it. But if you want to still want to learn it, we'll teach it to you. Does everybody understand me, brothers? That the two angels, Harut and Marut, they didn't teach this magic until they told the person, look, you need to know I'm a trial from your Lord. I'm a trial from Allah. Don't disbelieve by learning it from me. But if you persist, I will teach it to you. This is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing, Ikhwani, when a person becomes a magician, the first thing he knows that is disbelief. He knows, مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ he knows that they have no portion of the hereafter. مَا لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ That there's no portion for them in the hereafter. وَلَبِئْسَ مَا شَرَوْ بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ What an evil price it is which they have sold their own souls for, if only they knew. They know all of this, so he knows it's an action of disbelief. The next thing, Ikhwan, he needs to now become filthy. He needs to live in filth. He needs to exist in filth. And this is linked with something that the bead sabs do today in our societies. And it's called Jilla. Jilla Ikhwan is when they go and they spend 40 days, six months out in the caves. And you believe that this man has gone out there to do worship. But let me show you, Ikhwani, what the reality is. This is the reality, Ikhwani. This is a cave, okay? And in this cave, Ikhwan, what you see are some candles and you see a circle, okay? You're going to see a circle of stones on the uh, on the floor okay and this man this man which you're going to see he is the magician the one that is topless he is the magician the one that has been caught okay the one who is topless he's the magician he's the one that's been caught what do they do ikhwan they go in this place and what do they do they sit in that circle they sit in that circle and they do uh, the chants and their uh, invocations of the shayateen. Watching this, I want you to bear in mind, there is somebody who used to be a magician and he entered into Al-Islam. And he tells us that when I wanted to become a magician, when I wanted to learn magic, I went out into the cave. And bear this in mind, this, is, this person knows nothing about this video. When I, went, when, I, when I wanted to become a magician, I went out into the caves and I drew a circle and I stayed within this circle and I never left this circle. In this circle, I sat. In this circle, I defecated and I urinated and I ate from my own excrement. And he says, when I was in the worst, worst physical state, filthy, he said that the shayateen began to appear to me. The shayateen began to appear to me. And they began to teach me an element of this magic. They began to teach me an element of this knowledge. 
But they only gave me a small amount. And when I wanted more, Ikhwani, listen now. What did they say? What did they say? You will not get more knowledge now until you go and you fornicate. You go and, you go and commit zina. When I'udhu billah. But they didn't stop there. They said you have to go and sleep with either your mother or your own sister. Why Ikhwan? Because they are pushing a person. They, they want to see how much is a man willing to do to learn this magic. How much is he willing to give up to... How filthy is he willing to become in order to learn this magic? And so he says, I went and I did that. This person who became a Muslim, he's telling us, I went and I did that. I went and I committed that haram. Because Ikhwani is one thing doing it with somebody else, but it's a whole nother level going and doing it with your mother or with your sister. Billah. Think about that. So the shayateen are pushing him. And so they taught him a bit more knowledge of this magic. Okay? And then Ikhwan, he said, I had to sleep in a position of filth. I had to fill the bath up with filth and rubbish. And I had to sleep in that position. And this is how I slept every single night in order to please who? To please the shayateen. Ikhwani, a word on these type of things now. When you know that this is how they go and they learn magic, when you've seen it with your own eyes, when you've heard it with your own ears, Ikhwani, why then are we so attached to these so-called pious people? These so-called pious people who when he goes for 40 days, he reaches level 1. And the longer he spends out in Jinnah, this is we believe that he is becoming more and more pious. Ikhwani subhanallah. You know there's stories of these beef subs and they go and do these chilla in cages with dogs. Why? Why do you think that they go and they sit in a cage with a dog for X amount of time? Because they are humiliating themselves. Do you think they're worshipping Allah and there's a dog right next to them? Do you think that he's going and he's worshipping Allah in the middle of the cave? Because the man, it's obligatory upon him if he's close to a masjid, as you are in a Muslim country, to come and pray with jama'ah. To come and pray in the masjid. If he's so righteous and he's following the sunnah, why does he need to go out into the cave and do what he's doing over there? Why, ya ikhwan, think about it. Use your common sense. We have the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ amongst us. So why are they abandoning the sunnah and following the ways of who? Following the ways of the magicians, ikhwan. They're not following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. When the messenger ﷺ, when he was about to become a prophet, when Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq was about to be revealed to him, at those times Allah made seclusion beloved to him and he would go and sit in the cave. He would go and sit in the cave. Why? Because his people were upon shirk. His people were worshipping idols. So to free himself from this, Allah made this seclusion beloved to him. After the revelation came to him, I want you to answer me. Did the Prophet ﷺ ever go to the cave again? The answer is no, ya ikhwan. Before Al-Islam, before the revelation, yes. After Al-Islam came, after the revelation came, not once did the Prophet ﷺ go out like this, the way he used to before Al-Islam. These people, they are not following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They're following the way of the magicians, ya ikhwan. And these are one of the many things that we can bring against these, you know, so-called peers and maulanas and fakes. This is one of many things, wallahi. One of many things. So they know that they are disbelieving, yet they still want to go ahead. They reach the filthiest levels of, of their own situation, the filthiest levels. The next thing I want to show you, Ya Ikhwan, is how they degrade or how they degrade and how they disgrace the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Take it, Ikhwani, as a qa'idah, take it as a principle. Listen, no magician knows about Islam except that he disgraces seeks to disgrace Al-Islam to please who? The Shayateen. Brothers and sisters, brothers, what is more hated to the Shaytan? 
Is there anything more hated to the shaitan than Islam? I'm asking you. Is there anything more hated to, uh, to the shaitan than Tawheed? Is there anything he hates more than a person who worships Allah and he doesn't associate any partners with Allah? The answer is no. What is the greatest sign of Tawheed? The Quran. The greatest sign of Tawheed, Ikhwan, is the Quran. So let's take a look at how they disgrace the Book of Allah, seeking the pleasure of the Shayateen. Again, this video comes from the Shaykh. Ikhwani, what is this? This is a page from the Quran. Do we all agree? This is a page from the Mus'haf. What's being spread over it is menstrual blood. The blood of a menstruating woman has been spread over the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they're seeking the pleasure of the shayateen. They're seeking to please Iblis and his troops saying, I am willing to do anything and everything to seek your pleasure, for you to teach me this knowledge, for you to teach me magic, for you to work with me and assist me. Ikhwani, what you see at the bottom there, what you see at the bottom is a tampon. And the book of Allah, the page, has been rolled into this situation here. And then that will be inserted into the woman when she is menstruating. Okay? When she is in that state, Ikhwani, they take the book of Allah and they do what they do. Now I ask you, Ikhwan, by Allah, I ask you by Allah. Isn't this one of the greatest forms of kufr, one of the greatest forms of shirk? Isn't this one of the greatest things? Isn't this one of the things that is going to be most hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, I ask you a question. When we now have Ikhwan magic taught in cartoons and in films and dramas and programs and in books, Harry Potter and the like, I want you to, knowing the condition of magic, knowing what a person has to do in order to become a magician, knowing how hated it is to Allah, knowing the, the punishment of a person who is caught doing magic. I want you to ask yourself as a Muslim, is it okay for my children to read, to watch? to participate in magic shows, to read Harry Potter, to watch Harry Potter. Knowing that you as a Muslim, you have to love what Allah loves and you have to hate what Allah hates. I ask you as a parent then, is it then okay to allow your children, regardless of how you know innocent it may seem? Magic is magic, Ikhwan. And we're not saying that the person who comes to do your child's show, your magic show at school, whatever, the birthday party, whatever it is, we're not saying that he is practicing real magic. But what are you teaching your child? What are you teaching your child about the magician, about Harry Potter, about Dynamo, about the people on the TV? What are you teaching your child about the magician? When in reality, Ikhwan, he is one of the most hated of the creatures to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know, brothers, what our scholars have said about the magician? Our scholars have said concerning the Sahir, if we catch him and he says, I've made tawbah, Think about this and this now. If we catch him and he says, I've made Tawbah, do we let him go? The answer is no. We still execute him and we say to him, your Tawbah is between you and Allah. But as for the fitna and the destruction and the damage that you've caused in this dunya, we still have to kill you. This is their level, Ya Ikhwan. Let's take another look. As if that wasn't enough, this is a sewer, uh, Ya Ikhwan. So this is a filthy, filthy sewer. But these brothers, Jazahumullahu Khaira, they are looking for something in this sewer. 
They're looking for something in this sewer. Just tell me when the sheikh gets in. So, Ikhwan, what are they looking for? This is a Muslim land, a Muslim country. What are they looking for in this sewer? So you see, this is the Sheikh, Sheikh Adil, Hafizahullah. Yeah, he's got, in, got inside. He's pulled up his thawb and he's in, yeah? Has he put his hand in? Yeah. Okay, what's he bringing out, brothers? Has he brought anything out? Looking. He's looking. This is a sewer, by the way, yeah? That's the Book of Allah. The thing which he's pulled out of the sewer there is a copy of the Qur'an. That is a copy of the Mus'haf. Okay? Which a magician has thrown into the sewers Why seeking the pleasure of the shayateen. Seeking the assistance of the shayateen. Okay? Ikhwan, I think it's clear from that that we can see that it's a Mus'haf. So what do they do? They clean it and then they uh, perfume it and then they burn it clean it perfume it and then they burn it another thing that I want you to see ya Ikhwan another w w another one of the ways that a person becomes a magician is he does acts of worship okay so he he tries to uh, a Disgrace the book of Allah, disgrace the signs of Allah, disgrace Al-Islam. B, he tries to, uh, he knows that it's disbelief, but he's willing to do it. C, he goes out into the caves and he does this jilla, seeking the assistance of the shayateen, these acts of worship. He's chanting and whatever else he's doing. In that filthy state, he's prepared to do it. Why? Seeking their assistance. Another one of the things that they do, Ya Ikhwan, is they... Uh, they will see now and I told you that they have undercover teams which like we have undercover teams in in the police forces that we have around here they have undercover teams whose job it is to catch magicians okay so this is a magician who they're staking out now the man in the in the car they're staking him out they've been watching him okay tell me when they open his boot so now they're trailing him. Okay. Where's he going? He's going to the graveyard. Okay. He's going to the graveyard. So now they're about to block him in. Have they blocked him? Have they opened the boot of the car? Does he look like a magician? He's just wearing normal clothes. That's what I'm trying to say. You're not going to find somebody to say, What's that, Ikhwan? Okay. It's a goat. Where's he taking it? To the graveyard. What's he going to do with it? He's going to slaughter it. Who's he going to slaughter it to? The shayateen. Is it permissible for us to slaughter to anybody except for Allah? Question, Ya Ikhwan. It's not. You find people saying, I'm slaughtering this for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm slaughtering this for my Beedzaab. I'm slaughtering this for my parents. No, we only slaughter for who? Allah. Ikhwani, the blood that's in the veins of that animal, who is the one that caused it to flow in the first place? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So we only spill that blood for who? For the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Another thing that the magician does, this is an actual magician which they've caught and they're going to. What color is he wearing, Ya Ikhwan? This orangey red color. Is it permissible for men to dress in this color in Al Islam? A full garment this color? The answer is no. La yajuz. It's not permissible. So why is he doing it? He knows that it's not permissible, but he's doing it still to please who? The Shayateen. He knows that it's not permissible, but he's still doing it seeking the pleasure of the shayateen. So 
So what's he doing now? He's burning a type of Bukhur. Okay, this guy's a magician. And that's the Sheikh next to him. So he's burning a type of Bukhur, not the type of Bukhur that we burn in our homes to make our houses smell nice. This is a particular type of Bukhur which he burns. And what's he doing now? He's whipping himself. Why? Why is he whipping himself? He wants to show the shayateen, I'm willing to do anything and everything. Pain, stress, whatever it is, I'm willing to take it to seek your pleasure. Ikhwani, in reality, the Shia, they are the shayateen as well. They whip themselves like this as well. Okay, but this is a different type of whipping. This is a type of whipping which is seeking the pleasure of the shaitan. The next thing that you're going to see, Ikhwan, is he's got curtains on the walls of his room. Okay, and what he is explaining or what the Shaykh explained to us, Hafidhullah, is that he takes a bird and he slaughters it. Who's he slaughtering it to again? The shayateen. He takes a bird and he chops off its head and he throws the bird up. And you know when you uh, chop off the head of an animal like this, it remains moving for a certain period of time. And so he says, I throw the bird up while its head is being chopped off and the blood splatters all over these curtains. Again, it's just filth. It's not something that you would do, but seeking the pleasure of the shayateen. What's he doing now? Okay, now he is going to explain this shaitan. He is saying, look, the shaykh is asking him, in what position do you sleep? What position do you sleep in? And the guy is like, can I show you? And so he shows the position that he sleeps in. And he sleeps in a position of sajda to the shaitan. Okay, we're going to see it now. Is he getting into that position yet? So this is the position of sajda which he sleeps in. Seeking what? Seeking the... He's showing the shayateen how dedicated I am. How dedicated I am to you and I want your pleasure. The Muslims don't sleep in a position of sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet these... Khubatha, they sleep in a position of sajda to the shayateen. So again, Ikhwani, look. Does it, in reality, brothers, does it make a difference if he sleeps standing or sleeping or, or lying down or in a position of sajda? What do you think? Does it make any difference? The reality is no. <coughs> it doesn't make any difference. Does it make any difference how long he spends in the cave? That the reality is no, it doesn't make any difference. But it's the shayateen who are laughing at this fool, ya ikhwan. They're laughing at him saying, look at him. Look how much he's disgracing himself for us. And brothers, and I kid you not, they will say to the magician, well, okay, if you want us to work for you, you've got to find an albino rat. And they come out with the most ridiculous of things. But the magician then he will come to the poor person who can't have a baby or he wants to divorce, he wants to cause divorce, whatever it is. And he comes to the magician, the person and the magician says, you know, you need to give me an albino rat. And you find people looking for crazy green frogs and because this is what the shayateen have told them. Does the green frog have anything in reality? The answer is no. You take a page from the book of Allah and you disgrace it. Does that change the greatness of Allah? Does it change the perfection of Islam? Does it harm the Muslims? The answer is no. But it's the person who is showing his obedience to the shayateen. Showing his obedience to the shayateen. Brothers, our aim and our objective, our purpose is to attach the hearts of the people to who? What's our objective, Ya Ikhwan? I'm asking you. Me and you, what's our job? To attach the hearts of the people to who? Allah. Don't you see that our job 
is to attach the hearts of the people to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, he came to a people who used to make tawaf around the Kaaba naked. And then they used to go and they used to ask of their idols. Their hearts were attached to the idols. Their hearts were attached to stones. Their hearts were attached to trees. Their hearts were attached to stars. And the Prophet ﷺ, he came to attach the hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our job. And don't you see on the other side you have the Sufis who do what? They attach the hearts of the people to other than Allah. They attach the hearts of the people to who? Mawlana. They attach the hearts of the people to who? Sheikh Saab. They attach the hearts of the people to Peer Saab. They attach the hearts of the people to, to green stones, brothers. The man thinks he's got a stone in his ring and he's got some special qualities. And they attach the hearts of the people to that. They bring a so-called hair of the Prophet ﷺ. They attach the hearts of the people to this hair. You know, the man just five minutes ago pulled it out of his beard. And now he's put it in the front there and everybody's making sajda to it. And they're kissing it and they're amazed by it. They're rubbing it on their foreheads. And they don't know where this hair's come from. Maybe he's got a black dog outside, he's pulled it off the black dog. Attaching the hearts of the people to others besides Allah. Ikhwan, this is the reality of the Muslims today. The man, he has a new car and he wants to protect it from the evil eye. So what does he do? He hangs a black string off it. Fala ilaha illallah. The hearts of the people, brothers, are no longer attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what I want to show you now. Okay, what you have here now before I show you, this is one of the dhikr gatherings that we find from amongst the Sufiya, okay? And what you're going to find is drums and music and all sorts of rubbish. The old man in the middle, Ikhwani, he is their Shaykh. He is their holy man. He is their righteous man. Okay, I want you to look very carefully now. Okay, this man he puts his hand in his stomach and he removes from his own stomach feces. Okay? And the feces drop on the floor. I want you to watch what happens next. And we show this in the masjid only to educate you brothers and sisters. Can you see it dropping? When he leaves, what happens? Did the old man pick it up and put it in his mouth yet? Yeah? Do you see this, Ikhwan? He's picking up feces and he's eating feces. Why? Why? Seeking blessings. Fala ilaha illallah. Did the companions ever do this with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Brothers, think about it. How misguided we are, subhanAllah. How misguided we are, subhanAllah. How are our hearts not attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And they are attached to everything. Everything else. Brothers, I mention it in jest, but this is our situation. A man comes from Pakistan and he takes the mic and he goes choo, 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 choo. and you've got tens of thousands of people there. Tens of thousands of people. And he says, wherever you're, wherever you're hurting, wherever you feel pain, then touch that place. And you've got people, hands on heads, shoulders, back, legs, face, everything. Thousands of Muslims, people who claim to be Muslims. And he's blowing down the mic and inside he's laughing thinking you fools. Inside the shaitan is laughing, watching all of these people who apparently When I'm ill, then he's the one who cures me. All these people who have this ayah in their Quran, their copy of the Mus'haf. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ 
And if Allah should touch you with some harm, none can remove it except for who? Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have these ayat in their mus masahif, which are in their bags, in their cars, in their homes, top shelf. And they have these ayat and they've forgotten them. And this man comes, doesn't even have a sunnah beard, can't even recite Al-Fatiha properly, doesn't know anything about the religion. That young brother there is probably more knowledgeable of the sunnah than that man, than that shaitan. And the people come giving money, attaching their hearts to him, calling him, Beat Sahib, I need this, I need this. Go further than that, brothers. He makes more of a fool of them. He says, call a person who is not feeling well. If you know somebody who's not feeling well, get them on the end of the phone. And wallahi, you have people holding out their telephones like this. And he's apparently blowing through the, down the mic, through the phone, and the shifa is reaching the person on the other end. Fala ilaha illallah. Is this what our religion has become? Hold a picture of them up. And so he's got a picture of them, and the shifa is reaching them through the picture, you know? Subhanallah. This is how our hearts have become misguided and attached to every man and his dog, but no longer attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhwani, we're going to bring it to a close there. Barakallahu feekum. In the next lesson, insha'Allah, I want to look at why does a person become a magician? We've looked at how. Let's look at why. Why does he become a magician? What led him to do this? We're going to look at some of the signs and the uh, identifying factors of the sahir. And you'll find many of these, many of these so-called healers, they have these things with them. Then after that, insha'Allah, we're going to look at uh, believing in o uh, believing in omens, believing in omens, in walking under a ladder, opening an umbrella inside, that type of thing. What's the ruling in Al Islam? And then we're also going to look at many other things. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.